ARP-187 is one of the galaxies that Halton ARP catalogued and identified as a peculiar galaxy. This is because it has clear filaments that stretch away along both arms to the north and south of the image. It is considered to be a radio galaxy with what is thought to be an active galactic nucleus. These are thought to eject matter along the axis. This material often glows in radio. In a recent image they managed to capture the ghostly image of this but they also saw that the centre part where the AGN should be located was dark. Was this the first time that they had captured an AGN which had recently turned off? Let's dive in and find out more. The current consensus among astronomers is that at the heart of a galaxy lies a supermassive black hole, which spews out copious amounts of radiation and material. At some stage this black hole will run out of material to feed on and simply turn off. The exact process by which this happens has always eluded scientists, so when a team were looking at ARP-187 they think they might have caught an AGN in the last gasps of life. In the image they were able to identify the twin lobes often associated with these types of galaxies. At the centre of the image should be an AGN, but it appeared not to be producing any radio waves. So they then decided to examine ARP-187 in X-rays using the New Star X-ray satellite. AGN should be very visible in X-rays, but they were not able to detect any signals from it at all. They therefore think that the AGN has died and that all that remains is the older material that was pushed out a long time ago. Now of course there is no such thing as black holes, let alone supermassive ones, so how would we explain this in a plasma or electric universe? Now before we dive into this it is best to take another look at ARP-187. As I mentioned earlier Hult and ARP had identified it as a peculiar galaxy because of the long filaments that seem to extend from the arms of the galaxy. We have seen other similar galaxies in the past, these are often explained as mergers where the idea is that one galaxy pulls the other apart and thereby stretches the arms out as matter is scattered during this merger process. Halton felt that what these tales showed was actually the opposite. These were often an indication of an active galaxy ejecting material either along its axis or equatorially. So if this is a merger, where is the other galaxy it is merging with? The only nearby galaxy that I was able to locate is located on the right of ARP-187. An odd place for it to be if it is pulling the arms apart. But many of you will recognise the importance of the smaller galaxy being located here. Halton ARP viewed that these types of active galaxies could eject material that would eventually form a quasar, which would eventually form a small companion galaxy. Is this what this galaxy is? Turning to the arms we find two radio sources located further out. The first certainly seems to be on a line created by the thin filament of the extended arm of the galaxy. So what about the AGN at the heart of ARP-187? In the recent image they captured the two lobes of the galaxy. These are massive lobes that extend about 3000 light years on each side. In the plasma universe and in the electric universe the AGN is not a black hole but instead a giant plasmoid. Eric Lerner has, as far as I know, the only model of how this might work. He initially modelled his work from the laboratory experiments he conducted. Initially he saw this as a way of explaining quasars and later extended this to include active galactic nuclei. It is important to realise that his model relied on the plasma and the gravitational collapse of this to compress and create the plasmoid, which would be many times smaller than the original cloud. The plasmoid would create beams which would be directed outwards from the poles, just like the images you see from black holes. More remarkable is that this is what he saw during his laboratory experiments. When he adapted this model to the AGN model he saw that the plasma in this case would be supplied by the parts of the arms of the galaxy which would feed plasma into the central bit in waves. He felt that this meant that the plasmoid would eventually disappear and once the next wave came in it would create a brand new plasmoid. This means that there were clearly periods when the plasmoid would not be there. So does this finding clearly prove Eric Lerner's plasmoid model? What does this mean for the idea of a galactic circuit? If there is no plasmoid there must be a break in the circuit. 
If this is the case, why are the lobes still active compared to the AGN? Hannes Alvin viewed that these radio lobes were formed by a double layer which had to be part of what he called the galactic circuit. Protons would flow out along the axis and would become accelerated in a double layer. From here, the current would loop back around and flow back in along the plane of the galaxy. Electrons will be drawn into this double layer from the surrounding and be accelerated back towards the galaxy. It is these electrons that create the lobes that we can see. Now clearly, if this is a circuit, then if you break one point of the circuit, the whole thing should stop. Here it is important to understand that the idea of representing this as a circuit is a way of trying to understand how the energy flows in the galaxy, and this does not represent exactly how the plasma will flow. If we assume that there is a plasmoid at the heart of the galaxy, then this is imparting kinetic energy onto the material ejected from the plasmoid. According to Lerner, this would consist of protons in one direction and electrons in the other. While Thornhill has speculated that in fact the plasmoid ejects neutrons, which later decay to protons. The electrons would be more likely to follow the magnetic field lines of the galaxy compared to the protons, meaning the protons will be predominantly the ones in the outward beams. So why would there be a double layer created if the beam is just protons? If we examine Hannes Alfane's model for the double layers, these are created by instabilities in the flow of plasma caused by the flow of currents. If electrons tend not to leave the galaxy as Wall suggests, then a double layer must form where the outgoing beam meets the material outside the bubble of the galaxy. Is this material then forced back and towards the galaxy? What would happen if the plasmoid stopped ejecting material outwards? This material would still continue outwards, but at some stage the whole process would stop. But there would be a noticeable difference between the turning off of the plasmoid and the disappearance of the double layer. Another alternative is that the plasmoid does not disappear at all, but is still there just in a more quiet state. In Lerner's experiments, the beams were only produced in the final stage. Is it possible that the energy stored in the plasmoid could drop enough to stop the beam production before it consumes all of the plasma in the plasmoid? In the Electric Universe model, all galaxies are connected to intergalactic filaments, which power the galaxies, but the exact mechanism of this powering is not clear. Is it similar to the auroral circuit where currents are caused to flow because of the movement of the solar wind? Or is the idea similar to the electric sun model where protons are thought to flow directly into the sun providing the energy to keep the system working? If this were the case, could a plasmoid exist and then not be detectable in x-rays? I'm not sure on this one. Even the AGN in our Milky Way kicks out x-rays, so we really should be able to detect something. Unless, of course, the entire filament somehow became disconnected. So are the observations of ARP-187 a confirmation of Eric Lerner's plasmoid model? Does this show the end of one plasmoid phase and the galaxy in a quiet state? Or was this the final gasp of the plasmoid in the heart of this galaxy? This certainly throws up many more questions about how some of these models may work and which mechanisms power them. Making this video has highlighted to me that it is high time to create something which outlines the plasma universe and how this differs from the electric universe concepts, where the overlap is and where the gaps are. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.